Hello there. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Geneva Motor Show, which is pretty much the fanciest motor mm -hmm. show ever. It's super bougie here. Lots of supercars. Lots word of exotics. Use. I learned it from a rap song. <laughs> oh, I hear I'm going to credit you with some so, great intellectual thing and you learned it from rap. No, I stole that. Yeah. So if you're watching on Facebook, Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you send us your questions because we are monitoring and we love answering your questions. The other thing is, Geneva has a surprisingly spotty internet connection. Mm -hmm. So if we kind of cut in and out, you can always watch the video in full on our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. which will be up in a couple hours or so. Today. At some point today. We don't want to work Ben too hard. I no. mean, it's, he's been running around all day. We're all very tired. Oh my goodness. Oh, you the camera's going know. nuts. <laughs> um, so we're here at the, the Peugeot stand. And unfortunately, we don't get Peugeots in North America. Mm -hmm. But I, I actually this think they're super cool. This is pretty sweet. Yeah. Have you gonna, named it we're yet? We're going to call him Fabian. Fabian. I'm sure he has a real name. I like that name. I don't know it, but we're going to say Fabian. It's good. Yeah. So, um, so well, since there's nothing much to see here, let's let's go over broadcast to... Broadcast interrupted. Really? Well, that didn't take long. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. Okay. All right. So we're starting at BMW, oh. right? Because they had uh, a concept car that yes. they unveiled yesterday. And, and it's, it's good. It's very nice. It looks real good. It's, uh, you know, previewing what a couple of production models will look like in the new 8 Series range. Yep, so. and that's their new series of kind of ultra luxury cars. Mm -hmm. So they have regular BMW cars, and they're going to have this uh, really upmarket, Ooh. kind of like an Aston Martin type oh. level of luxury. And that's going to be the M8, the 8 Series, and the new 7 Series crossover, which is right there. Mm. That's but we've car. seen those before. Let's but keep we going. we have not seen the BMW concept no, I M8 just, Grand I also Coupe want to mention... And I want to apologize to our viewers because there are so many damn people here. Um, so we might bump into a couple of people and you might have trouble looking at the cars, but This is the bear auto with show us. where the least, I think the least amount of work gets done. Well, I see so many people just wandering around. I, it's, it's supposed to be a press day, but I think the public can actually pay like a very high fee to get yeah. in. So that's why there's a ton of people and like random children. But, but here we go. This is probably one of the coolest debuts of the show. This is the BMW M8 concept. Um, and as you said, it's just a concept, but it does preview an M8 mm -hmm. that will be a production model. For the 8 Series and the M8. That's correct, yeah. Um, and so I believe there is no powertrain information. It's Not just a design aware. study. Um, but someone pointed out that it looks like there might be a V12 underneath. I would be which surprised. would be the bomb. Okay. Well, you just drove a, a 7 Series with the V12 yeah. not that long ago, right? Oh, it was yeah, just this yeah. winter, and yeah. uh, that engine is beautiful. It's so smooth. It's the same one they use in Rolls Royces, so mm -hmm. it's very, very silky. Absolutely. A couple interesting things on this car, though. The green paint, it really changes color in different lighting. It can look blue, it can look a bit gray. It's gorgeous. Which I think is what they're trying to demonstrate with the uh, sort of oh, laser light, light show display, going yeah. on. Also, what do you think of the gold trim, Jody? That's not something you really see on cars these uh, days. I actually kind of like it, mostly yeah, because it's shiny. not really bling bling kind of gold. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's sort more of, of like a, a brushed. Yeah, exactly. it's classy. It's tasteful. For, and so, it goes well with the green, right? Yeah, I, and, and with the gray too. Um, so this M8 concept, I really, really like the design of this. I feel like a lot of BMWs and their concepts have kind of been, you know, slightly overwrought. Mm -hmm. This one, I think, simplifies it a lot without losing that, like, aggression that BMWs are mm -hmm. pretty well known for. In recent years, like, my favorite is still the E46 from, you oh, know, yeah. 10 years ago or better at yeah. this point. But we're starting to see some more of that tastefulness, I think, in the yeah. front end. Yeah, so the design of new BMWs just don't really do it for me anymore. I find them kind of boring, but this is cool. This is exciting. And it might be my one of my favorite things here, actually. Mm -hmm. I yeah. would agree. But uh, our next car on the list, what have we got? Uh, we're going over uh, next door. A very door. similar car to this, Basically, actually. Yeah. At the Mercedes booth, the Mercedes AMG. Yes, let's They're walk strangely over. named. Very strange name. Yeah, so this one, it was the BMW M8 Concept Grand Coupe. And although the 8 Series are supposed to be coupes, this uh, one has four doors. Yeah, yeah. And this one is pretty much exactly the same kind of car. But at least we know this one's a production car. Yes, because it's it's here now. My favorite thing about it is the color, the matte. 
blue is it just is nice. stunning. Some people weren't huge fans of it, though. Well, they're wrong. Yeah, so. I think it's it's unique, and I, I give it points for that. I'm not getting any questions. But. I'm not getting any video, so oh, I think, oh, okay. oh, we're back again. It's so. just very poor connectivity. <laughs> Sorry, folks. If you are just joining us, though, thank you for watching live on Facebook. And uh, make sure to send any questions in if you may have them. We'll do our best to answer them. And for those of you watching on YouTube, well, you know the spiel. You can we comment can't answer on them. it. Comment. We can try You're to going come to back. Anyway. Yeah. Right. So this is the AMG GT four door coupe, which yes. is also which is a weird name because we're old school. We think coupes should only have two doors, but you know I'm tired of complaining about mm -hmm. that. So. Nobody listens, right? No, <laughs> but they just keep doing it. So this this is special because the AMG GT, which is one of my favorite cars mm -hmm. to drive, it is sexy. It is like thrilling. It's so great. Mm -hmm. This is essentially a four-door version of that supercar. Except not, though. Except, yes and no. So it's not based on the AMG GT. Well, though, they're promising it? the same level of performance yeah. with this car. And, you know, it, it comes with the same, uh, the bi-turbo V8 mm -hmm. that's handcrafted, four, four liters, liters that we course. love. Um, it's probably one of the best sounding engines out there as well. And this mm -hmm. has that. And this is the 63S, which That's is the, the best. Model, yeah, it's yeah. the top line model you can get. It's the fastest. 630, 630 horsepower. horsepower. Um, That's a lot of horsepower, James. It is a lot of horsepower. Um, but there are two other models as yeah, well. So if you don't want it as crazy. The 63, there's... which is also powered by that same uh, twin turbo V8. And then there is the 53, which has Mercedes new kind of 48 volt mild hybrid system. With the three liter turbo yeah, six. Yeah, it was the inline six. Which even the base car, you get 429 horsepower. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nine speed transmission in every model. And that, that's interesting too, because that's really, AMG's trying to make a big push over to hybrids eventually. Yeah. And so this 53 model is kind of the first step towards that. So I thought it was really interesting that they put that powertrain into this car. Yeah. Which do you prefer, this or the BMW? I think you're going to say, I think I know what you're going to say, but what is it? <laughs> so here's my thoughts on that. The four-door coupe silhouette is very hard to pull off properly. Yeah. I think the BMW nails it. I think it looks great. The proportions are right. Yep. It doesn't look awkward from any angles. Yeah. I feel like this GT is a bit awkward from the rear three quarters. Oh, okay. It's, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like from the front, it looks great. Something it with looks, the trunk isn't right. Something right? with the trunk. It's. I keep saying that it's suffering from Panamera-itis. Mm -hmm. Oh, too much of a bulbous it's sort a of back end. It's a little bit too bulbous in yeah. the back. And it does something weird that it makes it look like not as luxurious and it, as expensive as you want it to look. Yeah. But something weird about that proportion just throws me off. But the M8 nails it. I love it. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. But I, we obviously don't know what the BMW interior looks like since we can't even get within yeah. six feet of the car. Yeah. But this cabin is absolutely stunning. It is every bit as nice as what you would get yeah. in an S-Class Mercedes. You get so much of the same technology, yeah. the dual 12.3 inch screens and I really the best like leather, this everything. because it's kind of a mix of the sportiness and aggression of the AMG GT Coupe, but with all the luxury and swankiness mm -hmm. of the S-Class. So you, you push those two together and this is what you get. Yeah. I also wanted to mention that uh, Europeans are able to get a five-seat model. Uh, North Americans will only have four, four seats. Whoa, Nelly. So that was an interesting call on their part. Mm. Uh, and of course, being an AMG can be like carbon fiber backed and stuff like that. It's but crazy. if it is a carbon fiber back seat, they don't fold forward, which causes a bit of a problem if you want to store skis or something, right? You have but, a second vehicle if you're going to yes, store skis. Yes, of course. Skis or uh, lumber or something. But yeah. if you Do want we have more any space, I haven't seen any. Okay, no questions. Peugeot, well, something, Peugeot 508, isn't it beautiful? I think so. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that model is. My, <laughs> I have. A huge blind spot when it comes to European cars. Stephen Elmer is watching. Oh, what? What? <laughs> He's our resident Hungarian. It's now and at offroad.com. Uh, where should we go next? We're going to Land Rover. Oh, Land Rover. Because oh, I actually here's think another... this is a beautiful product yeah. they unveiled. And it's actually yeah. a coupe, kind yes. of. I would say it is, yes. Well, by our definition, it yes. is. Let's go this way. We can pass by the Brabus booth, which is something else. Do you know what I think I would drive? This big one. I don't this know what one. it is. Some sort of G-Wagon yeah. that is as big as a house. The Adventure 4x4 squared. Look Steve at the Elmer would like this. He would. Yeah, look at that. That's intense. It's trucks. 
Is it is it enough truck for Steve though? I he don't is know. a man that dem- a he is a man with man, calloused yeah. hands, Jody. <laughs> a calloused heart. All right. But for luxury. Let's keep going. Let's walk look over at, the land. Whoa, whoa! I didn't know Brabus did Aston Martin. That's tasteful, actually. That is. A lot great. of the time, Brabus cars are a or little is bit this Star too Tech? loud. What is Star Tech? I don't know. Liberty Walk. They've got an iPad thing here. No, stop touching Aww. it. Why? I want to learn more. We've got stuff to do. Goodness. Okay. Patience. So, that's the... Here it is, right there. Look, look, look. Range Rover. Oh, it is right there, okay. SV, coupe. Do we, do we need to go inside? I don't think you can. It's okay. cordoned off, sort of. But... So, this is the... They called it the world's first coupe full-sized SUV or something ridiculous like that. A lot of qualifiers, but... Yeah, so this car confuses me a little bit. (laughs) It's beautiful, though. It is very pretty. pretty. It is very pretty. pretty. I just don't know why. Why? Why? Because Geneva, that's why. But, like, why would a coupe SUV be practical, you know? Especially one that's that big. But, like, most coupes aren't practical, so you've got... It's all about design and style, and you want something big, I you guess. want something imposing, something beautiful. But my issue with this have two doors? is that the, the regular rover that this is based on is also very pretty with four doors, uh-huh. right? So I just, I'm a little bit confused, but I'll dig it. What's powering this guy? Should be a five liter supercharged V8, actually. Very familiar engine in the mm-hmm. Land Rover family here. It's good for 557 horsepower, 516 torques, and it can move that big old galoot. Let's be honest. <laughs> it's a big, heavy car. She's yeah. a big girl. Uh, <laughs> zero to 60 in five seconds flat. Uh, you also Whoops. have air suspension and wheels span between 21 and up to 23 of inches. Course. Jody, imagine that. Imagine one inch 23 times. That'll give you a little context, okay? Ooh. That makes a lot of sense. And in the chat, we have, um, oh yeah, Emanuela Favuzza. Uh, I'm sure I'm saying that incorrectly, but uh, was watching our broadcast we were doing in, uh, it was Chicago, and we had oh, the okay. signed thing, Moto Man and I. Well, I sent that in the mail to him because he was the winner. We had a contest. Uh, oh, really? People had people guess the price of a certain Ford F-150. We picked a random vehicle. It was like a top of the line one. He was close. How much was it? It was like, I want to say like 62 was what it was, so <laughs> I sent that the off in the truck. mail and they got it, yeah. So, you're very welcome. I hope you that's enjoyed awesome. the coverage and glad to see you're watching again. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so well, yeah, I mean, there's not there's not too much to learn about this car. Uh, I'm, I'm really curious to see how the front seats kind of flip forward to let the other people in, but mm-hmm. someone's in there right now, so we won't be able to know. Um, what else can we take a look at here? Well, what's next on our list, Jody? Well, the we Jaguar got... I-Pace came out. Oh, you drove that, actually, yeah. for about six minutes, it, right? Not even. It was like three Aww. minutes. I drove it for Aww. about three minutes. Um, and well, it, it's right here. It. And so I'll tell you a couple of my driving impressions after driving it for three minutes. So they had us on kind of a, a slalom course in the rain, so in a little parking lot. So I wasn't able to go very fast. But I will tell you that I really do love that instant acceleration. Uh-huh. And it makes no noise, which is yep. kind of cool. The other thing that really surprised me was the very heavy steering. Oh, yeah? They tuned it, was, it to feel husky? It was almost husky. a little bit too heavy. You got to go to the gym, you're and saying. This was in, no, this was in normal mode. Like So if you put okay. it in dynamic mode, it gets even heavier. Oh, my goodness. And I love heavy steering, but it still felt a little bit too artificial. You know what I mean? Those door handles are awesome. Yes. That is so cool. Ben, come around here. Oh, that one's popped out? All right. I'll come to the passenger side. Uh, that's going to cost you something when it breaks. When it breaks, yeah. But brand new, under warranty. Very cool. Yeah, so that's Jaguar's first all-electric. Why is it the i The electric one should be the E-Pace. Well, because the confuses E-Pace me. is on the XE platform. So I guess this would be on some kind of like I platform for electric cars. I just shake my head. I don't know. M-H. Where should we go next? Well, Rimac is on our list. Oh, okay. Supercar. Um, but Yay, we've got supercars. a question about uh, cutting in and out. So uh, obviously that's an issue. Connectivity is a bit spotty here in the convention center. So I apologize. Bear with us if you're watching live on Facebook. Of course, if you want to see the whole production here, you can always do that a little bit later when this video will be uploaded in its entirety on YouTube. So make sure to check that out if you, you know, don't want to miss anything. Yeah, we're sorry. 
Yeah. You think that Switzerland would have really good Wi-Fi internet connection, but it but just doesn't. Apparently not. And that's a that's been a problem at other international shows oh. as well. What's this? Oh my goodness. It says Hyundai on it, Jody. That's that's kinda neat. Wow. That would be, that out that would actually be so fun to drive. Uh let's like a, keep going. Uh, is it Rymac yeah. or is it Rimac? I think it's Rymac. I want to say Rimac. And uh, it's the can company, I say Rimac? if you want to. If it's Rimac, can I say it? It sounds like Ribbit. Ribbit. Whoa. We lost Ben. Whoa. <laughs> Sneaked up behind me. So we're just heading oh. whoa. Whoa, over That's to... That's your foot? I'm sorry. It's, I, it's, I only need one. <laughs> You're hobbling I around. hobble around. <laughs> Peg leg jokes. So this is probably one of the coolest new supercars that came out. Um, and if you know anything about Rymac, this is an all-electric supercar. And I believe it, it's kind of a game changer because they're claiming it could be like the fastest in the world or something like that. It's got 1,914 horsepower from four electric motors, one at each wheel. Yeah. It's got like torque vectoring. Zero to 60, they're claiming 1.85 seconds. Less than two seconds to 60 miles That's an hour. That's insane. Like, I don't know if you guys really realize how damn fast that is. Yeah, that's like hurt your organs, yeah, bruise your like liver. Yeah, that's like scramble your face. So, interestingly, it has 404 miles of range, or it claims to have 404 miles of range. Um, you know, it could drive itself. It has level four autonomy, which I do Seems a bit of a stretch. Eh, but I also think that if dream. you buy a car like this, nobody really wants to yeah. drive, like, to be driven in it. I yeah. feel like it would be a lot of fun to be behind the wheel and actually piloting the thing. They're claiming a 400 plus mile range on the new European driving cycle, along with crazy performance. Now I'm sure it's not gonna give you that 400 miles if you're going zero to 60 in two seconds, constantly, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> If you drive it conservatively, maybe you'll get the 400 miles. But I will say it looks real good. It's, it's it, is, it is a slick looking supercar. It is. A lot and of them you see that are like sort of hand built. They're pieces of crap. They're kind of like yeah, nothing lines up this, right. This looks pretty well bad. done. Everything's really nice. And uh, it looks a lot more aggressive than the Concept One that came out. The one that Richard Hammond kind of crashed. Oh uh, yeah. So that one looks a bit like a fish. This one is legitimately it's actually been beautiful. Styled, yeah. yeah, I would agree. So where do we want to we want to wander off to next? I know we've got to go. We're going to go to Toyota. Something go to very Hyundai. important is coming at Toyota. Yeah, we got Toyota coming up. Uh, Hyundai. Let's walk that way. But, I guess. But uh, Aston had a couple things as well. Aston Martin. Where is, where we is might Aston Martin? By. They're over here. Oh, okay. I believe. I was just there yesterday, and now I don't remember. <laughs> it looks oh, different because there's so, so many people. Okay. We're walking past Rolls Royce and McLaren. This is sort of the British, British alley here, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, these are the types of cars that people really come here to see. Like, look at how busy yeah. the McLaren booth is right now. Did we lose Ben? Where did Ben go? He's over here. All right, he's waving at us. We found him. Yeah, so I guess there's a press conference going on here. These kind of aesthetics. Coming at you live, press conference at McLaren. So, um, McLaren everything. or McDonald's, I don't know. In common also with Mike, we hate gimmicks. Yeah, so, so this is, is McLaren's kind of new race car, cheap, although I believe it's street legal. But let's keep going so we don't get Lead in the, the way. Lead the way, Jody. Lead the way. Look at how busy it is, though. It's insane. And the, it's just getting busier as the day goes on. Yeah. Okay. We're going to stop by Toyota and Lexus on the yeah. way to Toyota, but we wanted to show you Aston Martin, and I don't... I think That's we missed okay. them. I think I, we missed them. You know what? I haven't Jerry. even seen them this whole show. I know they're here. Um, yeah. But why don't we just go over to Lexus yeah. and Toyota? But uh, we can look at all this nice stuff. Yeah. Lots of cool stuff that we don't get in North America. Yeah. If you're joining us live on Facebook right now, we apologize again. A lot of <laughs> connectivity problems. Uh, check out the video. It will be uploaded and edited later today to our YouTube channel, Auto Guide on YouTube. Skip a search for that. You can watch it all in its entirety. Get a pretty good look at the 2018 Geneva Motor Show. But yeah, so we look should at the Ferrari booth. It's so the Ferrari booth. busy. 
That's what I say. Yeah. Let's anyway. Go to, let's go just beyond the Ferrari booth because there's okay. one thing I just wanted to mention well, very quickly. Just quickly, this is the 488 Pista. Ah. Yes. Which yes. is kind of like a track tune lighter yeah, version of the 488. Yeah, lighter, more powerful. Yeah. Very pretty car. But they're actually doing the drive program very soon. I think it might even be going on right now, but they brought... A demon? They, they brought the Ram 1500. And the Ram for some reason. Brought, I really I love know. that old Jeep, the old Willis. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. The original. Yeah. Where'd Ben go? We gotta wait for Ben. He's... Ben? He's over there going toward he Ram. He Yeah, I, I have not oh. seen any Ram <laughs> trucks on the road here in Switzerland, but apparently the roads you'll be aren't able to buy them. built for cars like that. Have you driven down little we alleyways? We are driving <laughs> in a Renault Clio the last couple days yeah. to get to the convention center. And ben? He's coming Let's around. Let's go this way. Is this the new Wrangler? Sure is. How did, did, it, did it drive here or? Or did it break? Oh dear. That's going to be an Actually, old wounds that, you know, <laughs> you'll never get over. Never get those four hours. Yeah. Back. So Lexus showed off, what, a crossover? Yeah. You were so on their event? Yeah, so uh, I was a guest of Lexus and Toyota for the Geneva Motor Show. And uh, let's just go this way and cut through. And uh, Lexus brought a new compact crossover. Um, it's actually not, it's, it's kind of a subcompact actually. It's about CHR size. Oh, it's CHR size, okay. But it's not built on the CHR platform, which is interesting. What would they do, a dedicated one just for one view? Uh, it's a new Anthony. one. Okay. Yeah, it's a new platform that they have. Looking at it, I, I, I took some photos of it yesterday and I thought it was really um, resembled the uh, the NX. RAV4 or oh, something, really? the way the taillights are. I thought, is this based on that? Oh, that can't I can be. see why you would say that, yeah. It's just... So this is the new UX, and uh, it debuted here with two models, so the UX200 and the UX250H. So the 200 model is, of course, powered by the ubiquitous 2-liter turbo, yeah. and then the hybrid one adds the hybrid powertrain to that, More obviously. More efficiency and performance, I'm sure. Yeah, and so... This car, they kind of made it for 30-something-year-olds who might be new to luxury. It's kind of like an entry-level luxury car for them. What would you say the competitors would be? Like a GL uh, A A QX30, QX30. Uh, GLA, an X1, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so of course it has the big old Lexus grill that, that is on all right of the cars. It fits right in the lineup, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the styling is pretty good. Like, it looks a lot like um, the rest of the family. One unique touch it has that the other SUVs in the Lexus lineup don't have is, and you can see it while it turns around here, is this uh, kind of rear continuous light bar. That's a new, that's a new design touch. Hmm. Looks like a Lincoln. Oh, I think it's a, it's a neat design touch. I don't dislike it at all. Yeah, I quite like it. So. All right, but Toyota had something perhaps yes. more important. Yes, so this is the most exciting, well, the stuff, this, the thing you guys were most excited for at the show. <laughs> I don't know, your story on the, the car we're going to be talking about, I had, I think, 12 comments on it very quickly, people just... The thing about the Supra is that it has bunch, bunch such a crazy fan base. Um, so, of course, it's been 16 years since Toyota has made a Supra, and... Um. This is not the production Supra, but this race car concept is the closest thing we've seen so far to They've what it will look like. They've been taking their damn time. They have they? been taking their damn we've time. You know, the, the FT1 yeah. ever since that was what three, four at least. years ago. Four years at least. And this is so cool. But I wonder if people will still be excited about it because it's go. such a drawn out process, right? I'm afraid it'll be like the NSX. Like when it arrived finally, everyone like, oh. was just like. Whatever, I've I seen know. it before, I'm tired of it. Um, but this is the GR Supra racing concept. And it does a couple things. One, it confirms that Toyota is indeed bringing back the Supra under the Supra name. The name. And that two, it will be participating in motorsports, like the old Supra. The old Supra was like a really prolific uh, competitor. Mm -hmm. um, and you got some, there, there's obviously the release on this car, the Hi. press materials. You just seen all the hot peppers she ate Oh, you do? Night. Oh, no. <laughs> you guys tried she to kill me. Down. How you no, doing? <laughs> We're actually We're on live, live right on now. Facebook right now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. I'm talking about the Supra. I love talking about, about it. It's like my favorite thing. <laughs> but um, 
That's so, Michael Kroll with Toyota and Lexus PR. A great yeah, guy. Yeah, great guy. He's the nicest guy so, ever. So, but you you talked to Tadasan, the yeah, chief engineer, so he's right? The chief engineer of um, this car. And he also did the Toyota 86. Okay. And so he learned a lot of lessons from working on the 86 mm -hmm. about and and what not to do with the Supra. Um, so. There's a couple things that he was able to confirm for us that wasn't in any of the press materials. Which was, Such as? So it will be confirmed, or it has been confirmed, that it'll be powered by uh, turbocharged inline six, just like old Supras. And so what tata -san was saying to me was that there were a lot of non-negotiables for Supra people. Mm -hmm. So they met up with a lot of fans and they asked them, what do you want in mm -hmm. a new Supra? And they said, these things are non-negotiable. The FR layout, so front engine, rear drive. Yep. The uh, turbo straight six. And the last one was the ability to modify and tune and customize. Of course. And what surprised me wasn't on their list of demands, uh -huh. was a manual transmission which Bunch of frightens roar. me a little bit, Bull to be roar. honest. It'll have an eight-speed auto. <laughs> well, we'll see. I just find it hard to believe that super fans wouldn't want a manual. Like, They're all like of the us hardest want one. Hardcore They're fans, so right? hardcore, right? Um, and so, unfortunately, we have no information about a manual. There's hope. There, there is hope because Tadasan said he'll try his hardest because he thinks it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. It obviously makes a lot of sense, but we'll see. Um, when it comes out, which should be in about a year. We expect the Another production year. Supra to okay. come out early 2019, which hasn't really been reported yet, but that's what Toyota has been telling me. Is it Tada-san or Tada-san? <laughs> that's bad. That's bad, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist, I couldn't resist. So, what else is important about this? So, if you can look past all the racing parts, you can kind of see what the general shape will be for the new Supra. It's pretty dramatic it's if aggressive. they keep it reasonably close to what they're showing here. Yeah. There, there is a lot of contour to both the front and rear fenders. It's and of course the production one won't be as exaggerated. It I won't hope have that huge I hope they wing. Keep it, though. It won't have that enormous diffuser that's made of carbon fiber. We'll have the little sliding window. The if you go to Wendy's window. to get like lunch, they're not gonna be able to fit the bag Would you through. like fries with that? You only can have the junior bacon yeah. cheeseburger. You can't get the full. But um, yeah, here's a question I had for you, Jody. So, You've basically confirmed it's going to have a, an inline six turbo. Yes. Do you think they're going to pull that from BMW since they're developing the car's basic structure and yes. everything with BMW? Do you think yeah. they're going to borrow BMW or make their own? No, so they already said that they chose to partner with BMW because they're obviously experts in making inline six engines. Okay. So the, the going to go yoink. Yeah, so the BMW, well, they've been working on it together. It's been yeah. like a very, it's not really a parts sharing initiative. It's more like a engineering, engineering let's like combine our expertise yeah. together to make something really cool. Um, so the other thing that's very BMW is that it'll have a perfect 50-50 weight distribution, which is what BMWs are so famous for, right? So this Supra should be a lot of fun when it comes out. It'll have a lower center of gravity than the 86 and double the body rigidity. Double? Yeah. Wow. And a lot more power, obviously, which is one of the biggest complaints people have about the, uh, mm -hmm. the 86. And with the thing with the 86, they've never, they introduced it, and then that was it. They never really did anything to improve yeah, it. Yeah, it's know, just because or, or step it up. it's such a weird segment, because it's not a segment that sells very well. So yeah. they're hoping to change that with this. Um, and so he learned a lot of lessons, because it's hard to increase the power of an 86 without messing up the driving dynamics of the thing. True. So he's promised that with the new Supra, you will be able to, the engine will have a lot more capacity to be tuned for higher output, because that's yeah. what super fans want. They're, they like tweaking and stuff, so. We're getting a lot of thumbs up and hearts for the Supra. Yeah, I'm I mean, this, the chat, is, but, um, this is one of the most important cars here, even easily. though it's just in a concept stage, right? Yeah. But we should probably move on. There's a lot more to see here. Frank yeah, so Frankfurt, if you have no, any, Geneva. If this you is have, Geneva. <laughs> if you have Frankfurt. any more Supra questions, let us know. I've been hanging out a lot with the Toyota people, so it's uh, I can hopefully answer all of your questions. It has a center exhaust. They weren't able to confirm if that would be <laughs> if that would make it. Looks it looks like a, they, it looks like an afterthought. Like, oh crap, we forgot to put an exhaust on this car. Just well, where is it going to go? Uh, well, uh, stick it in the middle. Yeah. Great job, Frank. Make it so. Yeah. Oh, and this one's also going to be a two-seater. Only two to seats. help in the balance, yeah. That's, that's so the way to do it. I believe the last generation Supra had four seats. I'm not sure. Did they but ever that have? Right. I think they 
most of them had two seats except for one generation. Chat I room. Remember. Was the last Supra only a two-seater? Yeah. We don't know because we don't remember and we're really tired. But we got to go upstairs now. Yeah, let's, let's head up. Because I can actually see Aston Martin now. Oh, okay. Which we wanted to show you very yeah. quickly. So the Supra is really exciting. I'm I'm really excited to see what it will look like. But do you guys think people will still be excited for it, even though you know there's probably another concept and another concept after that coming? Uh, I really, really want to know what your guys' thoughts on that are. Let's take the escalator. Yeah. Ooh, I felt a breeze. Oh, and cigarette smoke. <laughs> you walk through the one area with it in the front of the hall here that's near where the smoking area is and it's just nicotine. Wow. Whoa, you Whoa. almost walked. That was real close. Jody, you gotta be careful, okay? This is an escalator. Escalators are dangerous. There's a serious fall risk. I don't know if you look behind us how high up we are. Okay. I'm terrified of falling on an auto show, which happened last time, but you guys didn't see it on camera. <laughs> Emanuela says Supra always had four seats. Unusable, but four. So oh, there's the answer. Okay, so they did have four jump, seats. Yeah, like little seats. Yeah. But this one is this one's only going to have two. So we were able to confirm that. So um, let's do just a very quick flyby. So this is the Aston Martin booth. They have. Oh. You do have a question about Supra. Yeah, sure. What's the question? Somebody asked, "What's the top speed?" We don't know any of that information yet. Um, in the press release, there was no information about powertrain or chassis or specs or any of that stuff that you guys are just dying to know. So expect that information to come out slowly within the next year or so. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't tell you more. It's all I know. Um, but we can but, tell you a little bit about this. Yes, this is exciting. This is the Aston Martin Valkyrie AMR Pro. It's a track-only version of the Valkyrie, you know, hypercar that they're working on and developing. And a few details to share. It's got a thousand kilograms of downforce, at least a thousand kilograms of downforce, which is insane. I don't know how like the suspension just doesn't collapse right when you're yeah. driving that fast. Um, it's also going to have more crazy. than a thousand horsepower, something like 1,100 horsepower mm -hmm. or more. And I also love that they named it the Valkyrie. What a beautiful name! They have the best freaking names yeah. in the industry: Vantage, Vanquish, Valkyrie, Vulcan. I they actually like the said to B. the guys, before, remember before this was named, it was just called like the AMR Zoo Zero One yes. or something like that. Yeah, AMR and I said, RB. Was I said to the guys, watch them name it Valkyrie. And, and you're they right. totally did. They listened to you, I Jody. called it. So this, this right here is going to be just a track version. It's a little bit lighter. They've taken mass out of it. The glass is no longer glass. It's plastic. plastic. And it should be absolutely insane. And Craig, we got accused of not being real car people again because we don't know anything. And to that, that's that's mean. I, you try remembering specs for 80 cars in yeah. two days. <laughs> Let's keep that going. That reaction needs to be a gift, folks. If you're here, if you're listening, somebody make that. Hey, that's pretty cool. This is one of those random Fender Chinese. Super Sport. What is this? I think this is one from um, the from Dubai. Uh, oh, W Motors, yeah. 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 So a version of this was kind of in the last uh, Fast and Furious movie. Not as pretty as the Rimac. Nope, this one's a bit more angular. I'm not a huge fan, but it looks aggressive. That's pretty cool. Uh, but, what's uh, next on our we list? We have Hyundai. Hyundai. Hyundai, which could be somewhere. Oh, they're at the far end back there. Because they have a concept, the Le Fil Rouge. Okay. Which sounds a lot more exotic perhaps than it is, but we're going to show it to you anyway. What does a Fil Rouge mean? It means something like a uh, thread of life or common thread. Oh, okay. And it's, um, I it's guess they're try starting to tie together their you know, past, present, and future was what the neat. press release said. Not really. <laughs> Ooh, I love these. So these are David Brown minis. And what these are, are essentially, they look like retro cars, but they have completely uh, modern running technology oh, and wow. like running so, gear like underneath. Running gear yeah. and Super electronics. Cool. I see a nav system. Yeah. Super cool and also very expensive. For a mini? Yeah. That's not fair. Which is kind of, you know, defeats the purpose. But let's keep going. Wait, this, let's just take a look, though. because this adorbs. Well, it shows you what the mini was actually sized like, not the giant mini and I'm making air quotes that we get now right yeah. you see how freaking big even just a two-door model is <laughs> they're gigantic yeah it's hard so to show cute. the scale but so we're not standing next to them but anyway so cute 
Hyundai. There's a, there's a guy in my neighborhood who has an old Mini, and he decorates it depending on what holiday oh it is. Oh my goodness. It's so cute. What does he do for Yom Kippur? <laughs> a big hole. <laughs> the, uh, the horn that they blow for Yom Kippur. Oh, he puts that on. What, um, what other random holiday? Columbus Day. So this is the Pininfarina booth. Famous Italian coach builder. Mm. Usually makes really beautiful designs. This is a concept car that you're looking at now. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't know too know. much about it. We didn't it. even have a chance to see like half of what's here. Yeah, there's just so many cars. So much stuff. But this one looks pretty sweet, eh? Hybrid kinetic. The grill lights up like a Mercury Sable. <laughs> it's just like a Mercury Sable, it's folks. Neat. Let's keep walking. All right. We're almost at the Hyundai booth. They actually have uh, two things there that are pretty interesting that came out at this show. Again, folks, you got questions, we got answers, probably, maybe. Fire away and we'll do our best as we wander here throughout the floor of the 2018 Geneva Motor Show. But I see the Hyundai booth now, yeah, Joey. Anyway, You're talking about the, we're gonna see the new Ionic, right? No. Oh. But they do have uh, a new electric Kona, which just came out at this show. So let's go see the concept that we came here for. It's right over here. The Nexo. This one looks like the hyperkinetic front end almost, doesn't it? A little bit. It's the Le Fil Rouge. Did it say hyperkinetic or hybrid kinetic? That's a good question. It might have been hybrid. I thought hybrid. it said hybrid. I hope. Yeah, that would make a lot more sense. <laughs> so this is the Hyundai Le Fil Rouge. I had to take a second to make sure my French was OK, because Sebastian's not here. So where is Sebastian? I don't know. Um, so there's unfortunately not a lot of information about this car. It's more of a design study. Um, and Hyundai basically said, depending on the response they get to this design, if people really, really like it, then it will influence their future designs. Um, and I quite like it. It's stunning. It's, it's, yeah. It looks it's entirely clean. buildable. Yeah. There's no over-the-top extravagance. It's yeah. elegant. It's tasteful. And so there's also no powertrain information about this concept. But it's so clearly electric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you can just tell by looking at it that this is an electric Let's car. Let's wheel around and see the interior if we can before they shut the doors, I actually probably. really like the interior. It's got a lot of wood inside. It's very Ikea-like, so it's got wood. It, it <laughs> Flat is, pack It's interior. good, well, it won't disintegrate in a couple of years, hopefully. It gets hopefully. wet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's very simple and beautiful. I and see I, carbon fiber. I really wish um, automakers would start implementing these really cool interiors in their cars, in production cars. Yeah. Well, that is yeah, so the Hyundai. Yeah, so unfortunately, we can't tell you Rouge. too much about it. Um, if you want to just peek over there, the, the Hyundai Kona Electric is also new. It has a whole lot of range. Um, but we've seen that already, so let's keep going. Shane Caneva says, surprisingly, it looks like a sweet ride. I would agree. In person, agree. it's pretty dramatic. It's very pretty. Yeah. Um, That's and a, like a lot of designers just, it seems like they don't know when to stop, to just put the yeah, pencil down. Yeah, they know, have like say, so many character lines. Yeah, just so keep much adding like, more, 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 and then you but suddenly I, end up. I really appreciate that. A mansory. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you guys this story about this mansory. Is the this guy the guy with the with sparkly the, pants? Oh, goodness. You, so I, I don't know if you guys know what Mansory is, but they're a German uh, tuning company, mm -hmm. and they're famous for ruining really expensive exotic cars. And they do that by adding a lot of like gold and carbon fiber, and it's just really tacky. Take and a so, Phantom Rolls Royce and just and let's make it ugly. Alligator and, like, trim even inside. more. Yeah. And anyway, I was trying to take pictures of this Mansory for a gallery that we have, and this guy, he was wearing like sparkly jeans like you know ed hardy style mm -hmm. it was like that but it like was rhinestones it was bedazzled and he ruined my photo and but i thought okay so that's exactly the type of customer that mansory is looking for he's there <laughs> he, they're gonna sell that one car this year yep. right and he got in that ferrari and he really liked it so he might have been a buyer um but that was Zen my mansory story <laughs> 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 What's next on our list? We've got Zenvo TSRS. Where is that? Zenvo is over this way. 
Is that kind right of the Right over there, past going? ABT. Okay, yeah, let's go that way. We're doing a, this is the sort of the Actually, end of the Porsche's show. Actually, right there. Well, whichever. Is that on our way? It or is, it's we... next after Zenvo. Oh, okay. So we can... I, I don't see, oh, there's Zenvo. Yeah, they're okay. right over here. It's funny, that guy, that guy told me not to touch that Hyundai concept yep. because there was some like gooey stuff oh, seeping no. out of the door. Oh no, <laughs> the hot glue is melting under the lights. Oh my. Ermagerd. It's over uh, there. It's yeah. red. I can see it. Ooh, this is new. So this is the the Hyundai hold Pagani. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what is this well, right here? What is this? Ooh. What is this? Now this. What? What on earth? Bertone. Ben, here's the information placard. 1963 Chevrolet Corvair Testudo Coupe. It was a prototype in 1963. That's pretty cool. Rear longitudinal engine, rear wheel drive, 142 horsepower from a 2.7 liter engine. But look at that design. Oh, I thought it was an, an E-type at first from the back side. From the side. back, I yeah. thought the same thing actually. Yeah. But anyway, um, that's like one of the random things you'll see here in Geneva, right? You know what, Geneva is really cool because you see all sorts of stuff from boutique supercar luxury exotic makers that you've never heard of before and they do cool stuff like that mm -hmm. so that's i love this show it's one of my favorite auto shows and did you happen to catch the couple of old alphas they had over by the, the yes. stairs going down yes, those are beautiful this. if they're still there maybe we'll swing by yeah. at the end but, um, um, so you guys are looking at the uh, pagani uh, waira roadster and this is the soft top version of the although you can't really see it right now uh, i kind of like the plaid inside that's neat i don't i don't dislike it I like the little see... wheel covers at the back, though, over the fenders. Yeah. It's like, it's like a 1930s touch, right? Yeah, and I like how they kind of like riveted on there, too. That's neat. And usually you can see Mr. P Pagani wandering around, but I don't see him right now. He's the best. Let's keep going. It's a lot of carbon fiber here, Joey. There's an old, there's a Zonda. <laughs> Lots of carbon fiber. So, There's a Samai Hajasasad in the chat. Sam, Sama, Sam Samai Hajasasad. He says Geneva is the best for all the amazing random yeah. cars. Yeah, I even saw um, a golf cart. Man Street had a oh. golf cart there, which is cool. So this is the Zenvo TSRS. And uh, this is a supercar from a Dutch, no, Danish. 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 Yeah, Danish supercar maker. Uh, it has about 1,200 horsepower, uh, and it's a street car, and it's one that you can actually buy. Oh, they're spoiler. doing something cool with the spoiler. The spoiler, oh so, my goodness. Yeah. As you turn the so wheel, as apparently, he turns the, wheel, yeah. the spoiler does gymnastics. It's a multi-axis wing, the technical term, but that's pretty cool. Have you ever seen anything I've like that? Never. That's remarkable. That's really clever too. Yeah. I'm not sure how much it I actually mean, it makes does, a lot but of, it looks well, neat. Well, no, it makes yeah. a lot of sense because that, well, that way you can get more downforce when you need it and yeah. then also more aerodynamic efficiency when you need it. So, Zenvo's killing it. That's, Stains are pretty clever. That's so cool. But it's a two seat mid engine. Curiously yep. lightweight steel and aluminum semi monocoque chassis. It's not all carbon fiber like like everything like else seems everything to be else, here. Yeah. yeah. Which is most unfortunate. 3,300 pounds, 0 to 60, 2.8 seconds. Yeah. And they say the V8, it's got a um, it's a twin supercharged V8 engine. What? I've never heard of that before. Twin supercharged, supercharged V8 engine, yeah. yeah. That's impressive. I wonder why Zenvo hasn't. It's not one of those supercar makers you like. You know the Koenigseggs and the Pan oh, Paganis yeah. and stuff like that. So I wonder why Zenvo isn't like up there yet in terms of I don't know, like street cred or whatever. It's a good question. Maybe yeah. they just haven't been around long enough to uh, have built up sort of a. They must a have been around base. for a couple years at least. I mean, every Geneva Motor Show I've come to, they've been here. They've had a presence, and they always they'd always have a new car to show. Yeah. So. Yeah. But we've got, what's that? We've got Bugatti on the list, Porsche, yeah. and maybe those elf, old Alphas, but Porsche's behind us. Ben, why don't we get going? Where, where, is, where is Bugatti? Bugatti should be right, oh. Right in the Volkswagen booth. Koning um, It was in this hallway. I think it's around this area, but anyway, let's go to Porsche. All right. Porsche had one of uh, the coolest exactly. concepts here, I think. 
What have we got? Give a tease, Jody, for what's at Porsche. What so, can the folks expect? So you know the Panamera wagon, right? Mm -hmm. So what they've done is essentially they've lift, they've jacked it up. They put plastic body cladding on it <laughs> and like say, here you go. <laughs> so I think we can go up this way, hopefully. They've cordoned it off with glass. Yeah, so what we're about to take a look at, it's called the Porsche Mission E Cross Turismo Concept. Uh, and what that basically means is that it's, um, the, it's the wagonized version of the electric Mission E uh -huh. sports sedan that they came out with, uh, what, like two years ago, something, something like, that? like that? It was a while. Yeah, so this is it right here. Because apparently everyone needs a crossover. Yeah, so this is basically, Porsche is basically saying, listen, like we, we know you all love the Model X. This is going to be way, way better than that. Um, and it kind of signals that they're committed to electric cars, that Porsche is committed mm -hmm. to the Mission E lineup, and that we can expect an electric crossover to come out uh, in the not too distant you know, future. Yeah. Say, I think two electric motors, 600 horsepower, um, what, zero to 60 in three and a half seconds? Which is Tesla territory, yeah. And we've actually got a few um, comments, questions in the, the comments yeah, section Yeah, sure, here. let me open up the phone. Jose is asking, how do you compare this auto show with the recent NAIAS? That's Detroit Auto Show. Oh, so that's easy. So the Detroit Auto Show was all cars that were relevant to yes. real people that we could afford, right? Cars people buy. None of the cars we see here we can afford. So it's kind yeah. of fun to, it's for us land. to look at it. Candyland. Um, yeah. yeah. But Detroit is a lot more realistic, you know? And the, uh, Shane Kavena. Kaneva is asking, what was the last car, a Zonda? Well, we were at P Pagani, we yeah. breezed through we, there. We, you saw the Zonda, but that yeah. wasn't the thing that was new. The last one was the the, um, the Zenvo TSRS from the we Danish have, um, supercar maker. I'm getting questions now, which is yeah. good, and we're getting a request to go to Subaru so we can look at that Visiv uh, concept, the okay. wagon. We, uh, they're that way, there should be. Yeah. Right, actually, back there. So we'll finish up. So Sammy here. says, "What's the what's with the nostrils in the Mission E cross thingy?" Eh. I thought he was making a comment at me. Sammy. Sammy. Bad. So yeah, Antoine. Oh, Thomas. so there's an interesting touch. Is that the badge is monochrome? Mm. Yeah. So I wonder if that'll be um, a Mission a E shame. thing going I forward. I like the colored. I like it too, but I think they're trying to think of more ways to differentiate uh, regular Porsches from the electric ones. Yeah, so this uh, has an air suspension that can raise the uh, ground clearance up mm -hmm. by about two inches, I think. So if you're doing some off-roading or light off-roading, uh, should be pretty capable. We've got to find Bugatti, though. We've Bugatti find them. Oh, they're over there. <laughs> I found them, Jody. Don't worry. Don't trouble yourself. What? No, no, they're right there. What are, oh, Bugatti. Yeah, Whoops. come on. Oh, no, she dropped her papers. I could help, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Where are we going? That was a joke. I'm kidding. Um, so this is also the GT3 RS, which is in this brilliant shade of green. Um, so it's fast. But let's keep going because it looks like people are filming a video. It's very, very green. I love it. Um, oh, Bugatti's here. Watch the step. <laughs> Jan Nick says, hmm, I wonder what the American car presence there is like. They have Dodge. There was the, the Ram 1500. Is, Ram yeah. is here. We've got Jeep. Uh, Ford has a booth, actually. Yep. Mustang on display, some other stuff. Europeans love Mustangs. Well, they should. It's a great little it's car. It's the first time they're able to buy one, right? So yeah, they're no, super excited legit, about it. Legit buy it, not yeah. a gray market sort of import. But here's the, the new Chiron Sport. Okay, the so, Chiron. so as if the, the Chiron wasn't fast and insane enough, Bugatti has essentially made it uh, 40 pounds lighter with uh, carbon fiber windshield wipers. Yeah, well the arms are like carbon fiber. Yeah, so yeah. it's like the first ever uh, carbon fiber windshield wipers on a production car. Um, but it, they, they claim it's a lot faster. They claim all those weight savings make it a lot faster. Um, and this is more tuned for track driving. Because yeah. The, the Chiron is mostly, you know, all about straight line speed with 1,500 horsepower. Yeah. So liter, this one. Quad turbo V6, or W16, pardon me. 
and um, yeah, so it's tracked, tuned for better just, handling. Yeah. And uh, I don't know where Ben went, but he's right over there. Oh, okay. There's a big 16 on the grill, which stands for 16 cylinders, because it's powered by the W16 uh, quadruple turbo. Bypass? Charged. No, turbo. <laughs> I love the design of this car, that, that swoop on the side, the yeah. sort of C shape. You know what, when I first saw this car, when it came out, uh, I wasn't sold, but the more I see it, the more kind of special that you realize that it is. Emanuela is asking, Judy, where were you in Detroit? I, wa I was in Detroit. You were in Detroit, Detroit yeah. weren't you? Yes. Yeah, I was in Detroit. Sammy says, what's, well, what's your A, favorite old car, supercar concept? For car we don't get in North. That's too much to. That's too we'll much answer, to answer those later. Um, but yeah, this is pretty neat. <laughs> that needs to be like a stamp, like <laughs> Jody. Pretty neat. Jody, pretty neat, certified. <laughs> it's certified, pretty neat. Yeah. Um, All right. So there was a new else? A6, but I don't know that we want to wander over exciting. there. It's not that There's exciting. There's a new Lamborghini we can look at. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why don't we go look at the new Lamborghini? Take a gander. But if I had to pick a supercar just to sort of touch on Sammy's question, I like the looks of the Rimac and the performance sounds yep. very impressive. I'd agree with you there. It's pretty sweet. Um, so this is Lamborghini about. Huracan Performante Holy Spider. crap, it's bright here. Yeah. Woo. It is really, it's hot. Oh my God. Um, so this is a really aggressively styled convertible. And it, it always confuses me when, when supercar makers do extreme track-oriented versions of convertibles. Mm -hmm, which is it just, absurd. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. This car is heavier. It's like almost 300 yeah, pounds heavier. It will be heavier, but I'm sure they would have made up for it uh, in other areas. Well, it is a little bit slower to 60. I think it does it in uh, 3.1 seconds. It's either 60 or 100 kilometers an hour, whatever, but yeah. 3.1 seconds versus like 2.7. Oh, boo-hoo. I know, exactly. <laughs> at that point, it doesn't freaking matter. Yeah, exactly. Right? I do really like look this at all this. Look at all the old. OMG, oh, the Irma wow. God faces we're getting. Uh, that's amazing. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. We should spam our own video with the, uh, like, Whoa. Look at all the thumbs up I just gave. I gave a whole bunch too. I Did wish there was the, the poop emoji so you could give <laughs> a whole bunch of. We would get so many of those. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, well, what do we wanna see next? Sammy's asking us a lot of questions. He's a, he's a paid uh, responder, that's why. Right? Yeah, so what's my favorite old car here? There aren't many, but... Do those minis count? Those are pretty you cool. You can pick one of those, old absolutely. Cars, old and it's new. It's an old, old and new. Yeah. I um, like the Alphas. Let's see if we can find the Alphas. There are two of them. Is there my... anything left on our list that we have to look at? I think that was the end of it. Su I'm actually... to see Subaru. Subaru. Oh, yeah, let's go to the Subaru booth. Where is Subaru? They're right back there with the, the white sort of vertical stripes. Oh, okay, stripes. yeah, let's head over there. So, what are we saying? Ryan Lynn Thomas says the Lambo we just looked at is fast enough for the wind in your hair. No, I think it's fast enough with the top down, the Lamborghini, to rip your hair out of your scalp. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, I think we had a question about how much the Bugatti costed. Uh, $3.6 million. Yeah. Pocket change. And it's not like you can even, if you had $3.6 million, it's not like you could even go buy one. You've got to be on some sort of exclusive list a to begin with. privilege list, right? yeah. So just being of means is not Ooh, enough. The touring Superleggeras. These are the people that did that amazing um, Aston Martin Disco Volante. Ah. Here's the Skoda booth, which we don't. Skoda. 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 But we don't get Skodas. But we get Volkswagen, so it's the same, same difference, thing. right? Oh, this, this is like this, 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 this. Concept. Oh I don't remember. God. This is the uh, Icona. It's like a beluga whale or something. That's enormous. It's like a bus. We'll oh, stand by, guys, so people can get an idea of scale. Okay. Oh, you have to get so in over here, but I'm not going to do that. It's called the nucleus. You can see how it gigantic is so it is. It's so big. And it's, it's just... also very weirdly shaped. Isn't it though? You can almost stand up in there. It's so the weird. Ooh. Hey guys, there's a. Uh, we can take a look at that. That supercar over there. That blue one over there, Ben? It's called the Ital Design Zero Uno. And although we've seen this supercar before, this is the uh, Roadster version, which is kind of cool. Um, and so this car is actually based on the same platform as the Lamborghini Huracan and the Audi R8. 
so it has that V10. We were getting another Where uh, is Subaru. Subaru. Ravindu okay. is asking Subaru. We got. We are very close to Subaru. I we're promise you. We're very close. You. Let's let's. We're go. gonna go past the Airbus booth, perhaps, because they made a giant, apparently, uh, quadcopter. This is a flying Audi. Very weird. Jan, no, we are actually on our way to Subaru. It's gonna be the next uh, booth we hit. So y'all that wanna interested in learning more, stay tuned, because I can see it from right here. Over there. Um, what else? We have someone asking, uh... Someone said it looks like an old bathtub. The big one. Oh, it's, they're absolutely right. Yeah. A gigantic bathtub. We're getting a lot of requests for Subaru. Constantinos. Oh, Cupra. Oh, Cupra. <laughs> Constantinos is Cupra asking about is the old Alphas. Wait, Cupra is Seat's new performance brand, right? It's like a like a GTI. It's or the Toyota Cupra. The S fell off the beginning. <laughs> Scoop, Supra. Cupra. But if it had an S, you could still say Supra. Like science, SC. Yeah, that's that's true. So this that's is the, this is the Subaru concept that you were all waiting for. And this is the Visiv Concept Tour. <laughs> and what it basically does is that it previews <laughs> what the next uh, WRX will look like. Ravindu says, STI, STI, STI. Heart eyes, heart eyes, heart <laughs> eyes, sunglasses, sunglasses, Yeah, sunglasses. so this is it. And I mean, it looks pretty damn cool. I will say that. Although Subaru is infamous for coming out with really good looking concepts and then seriously under delivering yeah. with their production models. So this kind of previews what the next Lavorg will look like. And we don't get the Lavorg. The Lavorg is basically the WRX wagon. How is that even a real name? I don't know. The Lavorg. It sounds meant, like a it sounds like a Star Trek villain. Yeah, it meant something. I can't remember what it was now, but uh, I must say this wagon looks pretty good. Very and nice. Subaru Subaru got, keeps saying that they're going to stop uh, under delivering on their design. So maybe this is a good step or a good sign of things to come. The paint is very similar to the Hyundai concept we looked at earlier. It's sort of like this liquidy metal yeah, finish, right? Yeah, it's very like pearlescent almost. Yeah, it sort of has this glow to it. That, anything else at Subaru? I mean, their products are pretty mainstream, and yeah, I mean, aside like, from this, there's not a whole so lot else to show. So, I'll show you something else. So, the Lavorg, you can come look at Johnny it over here. Johnny Niski is asking if there's Dodge. Yeah, we already said we that. Saw, we saw F, some of the FCA products earlier yeah. in this broadcast. They have Jeep here as well as Ram. So they had a couple Ram 1500s. So, this is the which that concept kind of previews a, a future Lavorg. This is a model we, again, don't get in North America. But a lot of people want this. And so what's, what's cool about this is that, well, maybe not cool, but it only comes with a CVT. So you would expect it to come with a manual. I know, look at Craig's face. No, 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 we're I've not never doing seen that. you make that face before. You're disgusting. But, but Just yeah, wanted to sit down. A lot of people have been petitioning Subaru to bring this model to North America, but Besides automotive enthusiasts, nobody really likes wagons, but I feel like wagons are going to have a comeback, you know? Along with sedans, once everybody stops buying crossovers, right? I mean, right? if you look at something like that Porsche concept, like, that's a wagon. They mm -hmm. can call it whatever they want, cross tour or whatever, but that's a wagon. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why so many automakers won't call wagons wagons. Like, Buick has the new Tour X, mm -hmm. which is a wagon, yeah. but they won't call it a wagon. It's this mark so of shame. Weird. Like, why aren't there any minivans anymore? It's a shrinking segment, but yeah. it's this huge stigma to the name, right? I, I just, think it's the same with wagons. I like People wagons. think they're uncool. I well, so think, do I. Yeah. I want what I would really want is a two-door wagon. Like, I guess you'd say a shooting brake. A shooting brake. That's the coolest. That would be cool. Like, what if you could get like a Mustang or a Camaro shooting brake? How awesome would that be? That's what I want to see. Yeah. Like a muscle car shooting brake. So it's practical enough. You could load stuff into it, use it as an actual But car, also drive the beans out of it. But also have a hell of a good time. Yeah. Uh, did you want to look at that Lagonda concept? It looks a bit busy, but we can try checking it out. I couldn't even get within six feet of it yesterday. So Lagonda is kind of Aston Martin's super luxury brand, right? We got another question, request for the old Alphas. Oh, yeah, we'll That's go like there. the fourth person. So they were, or should be right over by the steps Yeah, here. we'll go check them we'll out in a minute. In just one second. Let's check out this Lagonda concept because it's a pretty important one for Aston Martin. Um, basically, 
it kind of shows you that Aston Martin is thinking about stuff like autonomy. Yep. Um, and EVs, which is something they haven't really shown a, a massive interest for. Because they're a performance car brand, right? Yeah. And they, even Aston Martin, though, is this ultra luxury performance brand. They have to answer to the fuel economy and yes. emissions restraints that are in place exactly. in a lot of countries. So that's what we so, see with their like four liter V8 ah! they get from Mercedes AMG. That's why. Yeah. So you can still have performance with a bit more responsibility. Because their why, V12s are so awesome. Yeah, I know. And they have like cylinder deactivation and stuff like that too. And now you can even get uh, Aston Martins with V8s and not just yeah. V12s. They have that AMG sourced V8 yeah. that's amazing. So this is their Lagonda concept here? Yeah, so of course it's obviously fully electric, fully autonomous, but it is just a concept. But it looks good. It does. It looks like an Aston Martin should, the way the back end is yeah. sort of flowing into the roof line. There's a bit of taper to it. It is quite beautiful. The back cut angle. I mean, even look at that front overhang. It's barely there. <laughs> I also am secretly a fan of like the, the shag seating inside. <laughs> The interior is interesting because well, it's got suicide doors, which are freaking awesome. I love those. Yes. But also, if you notice, the roof pops up over the back seat. When you open the door, you can basically just stand up to either get in or out of the vehicle. It makes it super easy. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. And just a ton of room in there. Different use of materials. I think it's got cashmere. Um, Ooh, fancy. Uh, also, like ceramic trim as well. Okay. So maybe it looks like the Prius interior, but not just shiny plastic. It will right? look like a toilet, exactly. is what you're saying. There's a, we mentioned the V12 earlier. They do have one on display here if we wanted to just show okay. that. Okay, I think Ben's still quickly. looking at the uh, concept. Once Ben is out of the scrum there. So this is what makes all the magic happen, though. We'll just wait for Ben to finish up. But anyway, this, this concept is kind of exciting. It's, it's obviously really popular here. I think because it's it's actually beautiful. Like a lot of the autonomous concepts we see are just blobs on wheels. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So this this is at least a little bit exciting uh, design wise. Mm -hmm. And they have it so the steering wheel will move from one side to the other, if I understand right. Yeah. So when you switch countries, you can still drive it because it's not. It's only I believe level four autonomy. So it's got so one more level to go. Yeah, I know. Van. Hey guys, I'm so sorry, it's so busy here. Let's keep going. Craig wanted to show you that he's having a love affair with this V12. This is so good. He was just stroking it. That's 12, I beg your pardon? I mean, <laughs> whatever. Whatever, <laughs> change the subject, change the subject. 5.2 liter twin turbo V12. Delicious power plant. Now, they put this in the DB11. Was this, is this also an AMG sourced unit? No, this should be all Aston Martin. Cool, okay. And if it's, remember they had a six liter naturally aspirated V12 that they built for many years, which was sort of sourced from the Ford Duratec V6. It was still, believe it or not, despite those sort of blue collar roots, a fantastic right. engine, it sounded so good. This engine, despite being a 60 degree V12, if I understand correctly, oh, the camera's wigging out, there we go. Sorry about that, folks. But, um, as I remember, the only parts this shares with the Ford-based V12 of years past is like a bolt on the camshaft end. That's it. So they basically redid everything. Okay. We and had the sounds a, it makes We are had amazing. a request to look at the Vantage, which is right over there. So this is the new Vantage, you guys. Um, this, this one's a really important model for Aston Martin because with this one, they're really trying to um, lure in younger it's the entry audience. level Aston, right? Yeah, but you know, it came out in like that bright yellow color and that's because that's what young people want. So this is aimed for, this is trying to reduce the average age of Aston Martin buyers. I don't know why they, I mean, these Astons are so beautiful. They should have way more. They're gorgeous. They should sell way more than they perhaps do they do. An and I think they're getting there because the products design. are getting so much better now. Yeah. New architecture, new engines, new technology. And you don't really have to worry about stuff like reliability anymore, right? Yeah, like Astons be. have been pretty good. I would think so, yes. And are you but driving this soon? I will be in Portugal yeah, in a couple of weeks. That's I'm excited exciting. about it. What are you it. most excited about? Engine? Probably. It's yeah. got the four liter V8. But, you know, just just to take it out on the track and see, because they're going to have some track driving, I understand. And cool. Just to see 
that's where you need to really drive a car like this, right? You don't learn much about a car unless it's on a track, exactly. but a car like this, like a performance it's especially car. Especially a yeah. car like this, because you can go out and do 120 miles an hour on the street, but the, the risks moment, involved yeah. with that, or you can rip, Lose you can, your license. You can tear yeah. through mountain roads, right? But what if there's a guy on a bicycle around the next corner? I mean, it's just, it's just not a good idea. So we're getting, going crazy. we're getting a request to go see the Lycan. So we saw one Lycan, uh, we saw W Motors, I think it's, is that the Hypersport or is that the Fenrir? Well, that's W Motors there. Yeah. I don't know. That might be, that might have been the Hypersport that we looked at. I can't remember. So uh, Antoine says, I can't wait for the new Vantage to come with a manual. Offer Is it coming with a manual? Not that I'm aware of. I'm, I, I seem to recall reading a news report that said they might introduce one. I wish, I hope they do. Uh, that would be amazing. amazing if they did. I mean, we've been begging Shift for that forever. Own. I want a manual. I want a seven speed on the column. That's what I want. But anyway, let's, we, let's see if we can find Lycan, but let's go to those old alphas. We had a number of yeah, folks asking okay. about those. And, and I then just, maybe after I don't that, we'll just call forget it quits. them. Yeah. Because what time is it, by the way? Almost four o'clock. Wow. I got to leave going, soon, you guys. Knocking off early. We're going to call you part time Joe. Yep. But all right, we just have to wheel around here, take a left, go straight. We're going to cut through. How about we cut through the Dacia booth? Okay. They see ya. Dacia. It's pretty much my favorite Romanian car brand. <laughs> it's true. And the old ones were. I'll go this way. People keep asking for the Lycan, but I don't think it was there. That was the Fenner, which is their newer uh, supercar. <laughs> Mohammed Adil, Adil says, Lycan is just to your left. To your left. <laughs> to your left. Old Alpha's here. Here they we are. are. Ta-da. Blue or black, Joes? What, what, what's your poison I like the here? blue. I was going to go with black, yeah. so that's fine. You so can have the blue one. So of course, because these are old cars, they're Craig's favorite. So why are these here, Craig? Do you know? Not sure, but I'm glad they brought them. So the black one appears to have a 2.3 liter, six cylinder engine. And special Swiss coach work. These are Stunning. beautiful. Why can't they make cars, why can't a Camry look like that? Or sort of something I similar, right? I ask that right? every day. But uh, I think that wraps it up for yeah. us, yeah. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for tuning in and for dealing with our internet connectivity issues. Um, there were quite a few, I think. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry as well. But again, we're going to have this whole video uploaded and edited on YouTube. So you, if you've missed a part, there's something you're dying to see, you can go back and check that out. Mm -hmm. Probably a little bit later this afternoon, I think. Probably. So. Thank you guys for tuning in. And what's the next auto show? We'll see you guys at New York. Well, you'll be in New York. I'll be coming. You won't be there. I'm going to miss the first press day of New York because that overlaps with the Vantage Drive, unfortunately. I'm coming back. Boo so I, I don't it's know what to say. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. Bye. Have a good one. See ya. <laughs> I'm thirsty. I'm so thirsty. I started coughing. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the AutoGuide.com YouTube channel to get all of our latest features and vehicle reviews.